In 20 minutes, Championship Snooker from Preston. Now on BBC Scotland, Seamus McNeil presents The Piper's Tune. people the best way to enjoy the piper's tune is in the exciting sound of a pipe band. For some people it's the only way. No matter what your background may be, the impact of 20 to 30 pipe bandsmen in full regalia and in full song is quite devastating. Today we've moved out into the grounds of Dean Castle in order to give full scope to the big music of Dysart and Donald pipe band. This of course is one of the top combinations in the world. And as they move on into the castle, we can only feel that the blood is highland. And in dreams, behold, maybe not the Hebrides, but at least the former glories of military might. Almost all the pipe bands in the world are voluntary amateur organisations, raising the money by voluntary subscriptions or by sales of work or something. But in spite of that, they achieve a very high standard of professionalism in many cases. And this is usually due to the efforts of one dedicated individual. And in the case of Dysart and Dundonald, it's pipe major Bob Shepherd. 
Hello, Hello you again, Bob. Seamus. That's a marvellous sound you got in the band. As yeah. always, I was very impressed with the tone of the chanters and the drones all set and everything. Um, but the thing that I was just thinking about is how do you get them all to play so well together in a varying tempo? That is a, a, a difficult uh, thing and takes a terrible lot of practice. Yes. And uh, most of my face has got to be on the practice chanter. Yes. Would you like to show me how you well, do this? Well, I do have them possible. set up just for a five minute uh, quick practice before we get the bagpipes. Would you like to sure would. witness this one? Hey boys, let's try the, the banjo breakdown again and just give me one bar phrase. Ready? After two. Ready? One, two. And again, please. Ready? One, two. Let's see the doubling in C now. Again, one, two. Now this time, let's go right through the first bar with one bar phrases. Ready? One, two. Again, let's try two bars now. Ready? After two. One, two. We'll just bring the shorts here. One, two. And again, one, two. Let's say the whole part now. After two. One, two. Let's see the last bar. Humpeta hiti ti tom. Last bar after two. One, two. Again. One, two. Shorten the C. One, two. Let's see the first part again. After two. Ready? One, two. Up tempo. Now this time, let's try the first part when we change the rhythm to the hornpipe. Ready? Again, just give me the first bar, bar at a time. After two, one, two. Again, one, two. And again, let's see the first doubling on low A. One, two. Two bars. One, two. Now let's see the whole part. After two, one, two. OK, lads, that's fine. Now, if you put the seats away, pipes out, and we'll try the whole piece now with the drum corps. Well, Bob, that's really a fascinating example. And this is how you get them to play so well together? Yes, well, that's the method we use for practice, with the practice chanter. Uh -huh. It's one bar at a time. Do you not find that it's difficult for them, then, to put it all together? Well, sometimes we even actually, actually break it down uh, to less than a bar. Really? Uh, the idea being with the bagpipe being a legato instrument, we've got to rely on good expression to produce the vitality of your music. Mm -hmm. And I find that uh, using the, the rhythmic motive and building up to the phrase, it, you know, sometimes it helps and we get better results, I think. Yeah. Did you invent this system yourself? Well, I haven't seen anyone else using it, so I, I don't know if we could claim it as an invention mm -hmm. or not. It seems to work just the same. But that, of course, is the last part of the practice on the chanter, as it were. I mean, now that they're getting ready to play it on the pipes, how do you go about teaching them that tune, say, from the very beginning? Well, I'd have the music uh, arranged with the, uh, I call them interrupter lines, where I actually indicate the breaks in the music. So they would actually learn the, the piece right from the beginning, mean, in small bits. Do you mean breaks in phrases or just breaks in breaks what you're going to practice? Breaks within the phrase. Breaks within, within the phrase. The phrase. Yes. Uh -huh. And do you take them all at one time to teach them? I mean, or, or, or do you do this individually with them? Or? No, we do it as a group at all times. Uh, mm -hmm. Basically with the half circle in front of me in the centre position. Yes. Well, I think the boys look as if they're about ready to go. Maybe you can get them to demonstrate it on the so pipe. So we'll see how it sounds. Good. Thank you. OK then, lads. Ready? After two. Ready? One, two.
Well, that was a very interesting selection, Bob. Where did yes. you get the idea of playing that tune both as a jig and a hornpipe? It's not written as a hornpipe anywhere. No, but uh, I can way back a few years ago, taking certification with the Pipe Band Association, uh, I was taught that rhythm, melody, and harmony six. being the three main constituents of music. Yes. Uh -huh. So uh, for the 1980. World Pipe Band Championships. I decided then that uh, I'll try and exploit Rhythm Mill and Harmon because that was their special year. Yes. That was a jubilee year. Was that the year you won it? No, yeah. I'm afraid that they became six. Six? Yeah, and I was one of the purer it. years. <laughs> that wasn't the time I judged it when no. you were six. That's quite good. <laughs> yeah. Let's go back to basics, perhaps. Um, you know, this combination of pipes and drums, it's, it's quite a modern thing. I mean, a pipe band is only 100 years old or something, isn't yes, it? Yes, that's correct. Um, do you think there's any case now for adding other instruments? Well, I don't think so. I think we've still got to keep the pipe band. Uh, I think we've got a, a few other things that we should be attempting to do. So for example, uh, you notice that the, I used a, an open, a harsh circle. Yes. Uh, well, in competition, of course, the rule states that you've got to play in a circle. And mm -hmm. I think that's a bit outdated now. Well, if, it's, if you're in a circle, you've got your backs to some of the audience. That is true. Uh -huh. And plus the fact, the, depending on where the audience might be standing, mm -hmm. listening, you uh, hear all the drums or part of the yeah. pipes or what have you. Because the complaint is that the, the terracing Tam never hears the thing anyway because he can't get near enough to hear it. Well, that is and the typical complaint. And there's two bands complaint. playing at one yeah. time or something. That's a typical, that's, uh -huh. that is a complaint, yes. The other thing, you don't play with the band now, do you? Well, I, again, that's another idea of mine. I think that the pipe major or musical director, or what you may call him, has got enough to do to set the band up. And I would prefer if one would be allowed to conduct the band. Mm -hmm. Well, I, I think you, you get effects conducting you couldn't do if you were playing with the band. I That's think so, certain. yes. I mean, you couldn't do the variation of tempo without a conductor. That's, yes, yeah. Is there anything else that's necessary in a band, you know, for example, the arrangements, picking tunes and so on, do you think that should be one man's job to do that? Well, I think it's one man's job, but he's got to more or less uh, really pay particular attention to his drum corps because he's a drum corps. Again, speaking about this vitality of the music can help the pipe, the piper greatly by providing the, the changes in volume. Yes. Again, we can't blow the pipe harder Any or harder, softer, no. but the drums could give us the illusion of creating the dynamics within the, yes. the piece. Uh -huh. You wouldn't think of dropping some pipers out and halfway through or bringing them in to increase volume or decrease. Well, we've done something, something uh, similar to that by possibly not dropping them out by, but by starting with a solo paper mm -hmm. or one or two papers and then mm -hmm. for impact and increasing the volume, bring the papers in, the rest of the band in. Yeah. Now, do you think it's possible for a piper to combine playing in a band and playing in solo competitions? Yes. It's not a drawback to I don't have think to it's a drawback. Anyway. No. You have some good solo pipers in your band, though. Yes, that's true. And you've taught all of this band yourself from the beginning? I think the present band that we see uh, today, possibly with the exception of, I think, two pipers. Do you think the Pipe Band Association will change much in the next few years with regard to competition rules to allow for these things to happen? Well, I, I've got to say I hope so because I want them to change. Uh, we're now finding that bands in Canada and America, the have seen the, the sense of change, and they are changing. Mm -hmm. And of course, we are the parent organisation, so we now have the situation we might be getting told to, to change. Well, in fact, I think you are uh, adopting some of the things that that Canadian band, Phil Livingston's 78 Highlanders or something, this slur from a low G to low A, you've been trying this, haven't that's you? That's right, yes, uh -huh. that's correct. Do you think there's any future in doing that from a low A to a B and up the scale? Or... Well, again, you see, it's all a question of trying to create uh, a, a change in volume, a change in 
the sound. Yes. Uh, rather than remain, again, to try and give you expression and yes. try and make the thing stand out, make it more interesting to listen to. Well, thanks very much, Bob. That's been a great contribution to the Piper's tune, the pipe band side of it. And I think, in fact, we're about to hear your pipe band yeah. coming out again. Yeah?